G'day, how you going? Ian Aplis here, acrylic guru from Australia. Welcome to my studio where I like to teach you beginners and advanced beginners what you can paint in acrylic and they are my free gift to you. Before I get started, I'll put the size of the canvas I'm using and I will also have the colours running up the screen that are going to be used in this tutorial. Now this is a special tutorial. This is showing you how I use Retarder in my acrylic artwork. I only paint in acrylic and I've been noticing a lot of people asking how do you use it, where do you use it, how much to use and things like that. So this tutorial is going to have quite a few all in one. How to do it, where and what and different like sky, trees, this and that. How you can create different things. So this tutorial has probably all 10 in one, something like that. Okay, so get on over here and I'll show you what we're going to do. Now I've got my canvas here. I'm gonna. I want to have some water coming towards us, and the ground and grass is going to slowly sink into the water. We've got our mid ground here with a tree. Now the tree is going to be in front of a sky. So I'm going to show you how I use the retarder in my sky. Now there's so many different types of retarders, different brands and different suppliers. Okay, so I my go-to one is it's just on just. Me, retarder medium the medium for those people who don't understand the media it doesn't mean it's medium from soft medium and hard it means it's a medium this one's even got the word medium written on it it's to me a medium is something you're going to add onto your canvas whether it's paint retarder or oil or whatever now these are just some i've got global i use this one and i use this one but this is my go-to one now in using retarder for acrylics, I mix it with, I usually call this craft paint. Here's one here from the, this was $3, okay, from the $2 shop, uh, or those economy craft shops, okay. It's non-toxic, it's just poster paint. It's white soft body, the same as this. I found this in the art shop where I go and buy all my art supplies, and this comes in even bigger bottles. I'll just show you, I'll, I'll put another one right here. There we go, we've got one there and another one here. I'll move my camera back a bit so you can see. Now it comes in big bottles like this and they even sell it in the primary and secondary colours as well with in, in sizes like this. I buy this and I usually fill this bottle up because this is more practical to squeeze out for my filming purposes. So there's a global brand, there's Chromacryla brand. This says medium body but it's the same consistency as this that you see me use. I'm going to show you how this comes out of the bottle. Now, nine times out of ten, my sky has retarder mixed with the paint. My water doesn't usually because I'm on a small to medium sized canvas. If you're doing a massive big canvas, you need to have had practice before you start painting on a large footprint. I would use it there as well. So I'm going to show you how I use it on my sky here. Now, keep in mind, I'm using acrylic paint. So if you've never used retarder before, acrylic paints can be dry and chalky looking. So I'm going to show you how not to get that dry, chalky look and do a beautiful sky. So down here, like I said, I've got my craft paint and retarder. So I'm going to use some retarder. So what I normally do, I know how much of a sky I'm going to do, so that's pretty much how much paint I will put down on my palette. Now, that's a lot soft. Look at it. It's a soft body. I call it craft paint, soft body paint, poster paint, student paint, whatever. Okay. Now, how I use my retarder is in this stuff, and the best way I find to put it on the canvas is with one of my yellow handled putter on a brushes. It's a, it's a 50 millimeter or a two inch. I use that instead of one of these brushes because one of these could take your, your cows will be home before you finish painting. So I use one of these and using the brush and then going to the tips, it has a lot of benefits I'll show you as well. So depending on your climate is depending on how much retarder you will use as well. I'm just using my other bottle because that one's still sealed and I haven't used it yet, so I'll use this one up first. Now, there's my retarder. You don't want to over-retard your paint. The word retard means to hold back, slow down, slow, s retard, pull back. That's what the word retard means, retarder, okay? So we'll mix that up, and it's going to slow down the drying time of this paint. And I put this on my canvas so my sky colours will flow, blend and merge soft and beautiful like oil paints. Now practice this procedure. I'm loading up that 
your retarder into this, not the whole lot there, just working out the consistency I feel I'm going to want. And I could see this puddle here is more retarded than this bit right over here. Now, like I said, practice is the key to everything. Okay, so I know where my sky is. I'm just going to go halfway down here. Pick up some more. Took too much out of my brush. Now, my canvas is pre-primed from the shop. It's off a roll. I've cut it out to the size I want. I do not gesso it because it's already pre-primed. If you're going to paint on something different, like a fence post or a surfboard or a brick wall, gesso it up ready for your paint. But normally, when I paint, I don't gesso it up. I use this for the sky. And you watch what this does for the acrylic paints to get your sky looking quite decent. You can get atmosphere, pollution, all sorts. Now, that is wet and it's thick. I come to the tip of this brush and I stroke it left and right. A lot of you hear me say I'm stroking it like a pure gentleman. And that's what I'm doing there. Left and right. It's very thin. And now you might have seen some of the oil artists use it and they put their finger down and go like that. This is the same sort of procedure, I suppose, but for acrylics is that soft body craft paint, poster paint, student paint, and the right amount of retarder. Now for this demonstration, I'm gonna use a simple, bright, sunshiny day with some beautiful clouds in the sky. Now to get that simple, beautiful, bright sky, I'm gonna use cerulean blue. I've got some quinacridone magenta, and I've got some mid-tone gray that already mix in a tube, okay? And I wanna start off with the cerulean blue. Load that on my brush. Now take note, that up there on the canvas has the retarder. These colors I am not putting in the, the retarder. Take note when you're watching my tutorials, there's a lot of little things you might be missing if you're skipping. So see what I'm adding and what I'm not adding. I try and show everything without skipping through to speed the process up for you people there. Now I'm gonna load this into the brush so I can start at the top and bring it down. You always want the top, if anything, darker and then the bottom a bit lighter to get atmosphere and that shape of the sphere in there. Now I'm gonna just push this on, okay? Now I'm gonna start bringing it down, X stroking it down because I'm starting to get some white bits there so I need to keep X stroking them down. Get it on there, practice how you can get the paint onto your canvas. It's all about practice. Now I'm gonna stroke it left and right like a pure gentleman. You don't want your sky big, bright, blue, where it looks cartoony, okay? Now there, it can be a bit lighter, but that'll do. What I'm gonna do, I've got me gray. I wanna slowly add a bit of magenta in there just to get that a little bit warm gray. Just a little bit. You don't want it that strong on there. I'll, I'll wind that down into that color there. So when it drops, because it does dry a lot darker, and this is gonna go in the horizon. I just wanna put this here, push it there, and now wind it up. I'm pushing it up into the sky, just so there's not a, a, a hard line there. It looks like it's just evaporating down the back of the sky there. Work it out, practice it, play with it. And when you do a sky like this, it'll just look so much more realistic. Now down here, I've just wet me palette to keep it wet a bit. I'm gonna put a bit of retarder with those colors because I'm gonna need them for the lower half of the water. So I'll just mix that into that, okay? And then I'll just mix that bit of retarder into that blue as well. So when I come back to it, it's gonna stay wet, it won't have a skin on it. All right. Now my time is uh, 16 minutes past 12. We'll just see how long they stay wet when I go to use them again, and I'll show you the time again as well if I can remember to put the camera to the clock. So grab your paint for the clouds. I'm gonna use the white out of the tube, which is this one here. Now this in the tube is a lot more thicker than that first bottle craft paint I use. See it there? Look at it. It's thicker density. Okay, that is my cloud cover. So I'm going to use a fan brush and I'll just show you the brushes I like to use. Uh, my blending brush. Okay, you can message me on Facebook. Check out the links in the bottom of this video. Look at the Facebook link, the uh, merchandise link. There's all sorts of stuff there. And a kitchen cloth to wipe the blending brush. It's important as well. We're not going to need this one for the clouds. So what I normally do, 
me, it's a hog bristle fan brush, that's just what I use, you can even use a fill, but I like to load it up on one side, turn it over and load the other side. So it's not a big blobby mess like that, that's what you don't want. So that's why I pat it down like this, and I can control how I want my clouds. Now if you're learning clouds, just start with simple ones first. Now I'll put something, where's my land going to be about here? So I'll put something long and lineal down the bottom first, just to put something into that grey magenta colour. So what I do, that's quite thick, it's only a little canvas here, so I'm going to kind of soften that down a bit. Now if anything, I'm going to make a line, but watch what I do with my line. I'm going to break it up, I want to bring something up there, a bit of a top on it. I want some open windows within this stuff like that. So when I'm actually blending it, it's going to have dimension within it. This is so simple to do. I've done them a lot different and quicker before in other tutorials, but there's just so many ways you can do this. This is just going to be that row of clouds on the horizon there. And for some reason, I don't like to stop them there. I always like to spay them out a bit. It's just a habit of I like to do with my clouds. I'll show you how it looks when I've done it. Now you grab your blending brush. Now what I do, I grab the corner of this brush and I start tapping and then doing little moves and looking what's happening as I'm doing it. So come closer and have a gander. Okay, so the tops are kind of done but they still need a bit of manipulating with the brush. So I'll just dance around the top a bit. That paint that's on there, see what it's doing? It's wet still and it's gonna stay wet for a quite a, not, a not, not all day. Now, all right, I'm doing that. I want to keep a bit of an openness there, but my brush has already got paint on it, so that's why you need that kitchen cloth. And you're pretty much like a mad scientist. I'll pull back and just show you how I'm hunched up and doing it once I get going. Now I'm going to bring the brush down to the bottom, middle and the bottom of the cloud, and then bringing that down and washing it into that grey magenta. If anything, leaving the top hard. And those windows that I talked about, here, they're creating dimension within the cloud. Moving right along, got some brighter bits there, and then wash it down. If you see any patterns happening, just distort them. Coming across. I'm very lightly touching, I'm giving it bugger all pressure. Control the pressure, squirt that end out there, and I'm going to start pulling this down into that polluted atmosphere there. Now I can feel some of these, that's it, coming off there. For what you don't see, I'm, I'm like this, I've got me cloth here and I've got me, and I'm, if I wasn't filming, I'd be like this, looking at me work, wiping it, and then just, that's what it's all about, that's how you've got to do a cloud. But get on with it as well, don't take all day, and stand back and have a look. Now I've washed that brush, that's okay. Look at that, that's not bad. We've got that gray magenta behind it. What you can do now with this cloud here if you want, you've washed your brush, pick up a little bit more. Don't overdo it, but load it the same way. Now I know I'm gonna have my tree here, so I'll do it over this side. And you sit this in front with the top, come right off the painting. You sit this in front of that. The top's gonna be hard and sharp. And the bottom's just simply going to be blended down. I'll stop about there somewhere. That'll do. I had trouble with clouds when I learnt. And there was a lot of stuff I couldn't get from YouTubers when I was learning, looking how to do something. So that's why I try and give you what I couldn't find. Now, I want to leave the top of that there. And then just bring the bottom of that cloud down. I'll drag that over there first. And I'm just bringing the bottom of that cloud down. That's just the tape there, but I don't want it to distort what you're looking at. And when we put the land in front of that, it's just going to create so much realism. And that's what you can do with your acrylic paints. Now we'll just put something in the sky over our head. They're the distant clouds. So down here, we'll just do a nice big fluffy cumulus cloud up into the sky and maybe some high cirrus in the top, just to give you a, an idea what 
fills the sky up. Look at clouds, understand them, look at the colours within them. If you're going to paint clouds, you need to look at them and need to see what makes them work. Because once you know that, we up there, you can do it. All right, let's get a, a bit of a flippity flop around here. I might have gone just a little bit into that grey there. I want something nice and fluffy here. Now, the secret to a good cloud, where I have seen people, they do something like this. And then they're blending that down okay. And they've got a lot of, let's say, camel hump clouds in the sky. So you don't get that. The secret is, see what I've done here? I've made the cloud a bit of a wide footprint everywhere. Okay. It's not just in lines. Be creative with your shapes. Clouds do not have a distinct shape. They are nature's gift to us. Now, with this cloud, because it's coming over our head, I'd better just put a bit more of a, a build a, somewhere where I can put a base onto it there and maybe here. What I like to do is get this brush on its edge and just sit the base of the cloud down. I call it a bum, something out there, just like that. And then you just simply blend from there up but leaving those windows, watch, you're creating turmoil. You can blend the top away, but not too much away, otherwise it'll look a bit fake. I like dragging that just to get a little bit there, so I'll just drag that, there we go. And watch how easy this is to turn it into a cloud. I'm gonna stamp that there, little bits of twist. Wipe my brush. I've got blue sticking through, I've got gray, and I've got some heavy white. That's what you want. Fix the top of this up so it looks a bit more real. And spay that out like I said down the bottom, how I like to do. Now because this cloud has a base, it's going to kind of look like it's over our head. I just want something over here, because the tree's going to be about here somewhere. So something just here. So I'll, I'll create the... Sh there we go. Turning my brush, flipping and flopping. There we go. That'll do. This is a small canvas. You don't want to do this to a painting. I'm doing this in a, in a demo. You don't want to overcloud your sky. Sometimes we can overdo it. So just remember that less is more. Now I'm just going to blend this. Now to get realistic clouds onto a retarded surface where I've retarded it, you do the yumminess. So we've, we've done our white footprint. We've blended it the way we want it to look. So what I like to do now is put a little bit of weather into that and then the yumminess. I'm not going to put this colour in here because that's the grey and the magenta. I want to put just the grey only. Now the trick to add the grey in your cloud, there's your, let's just say there's your, there's your cloud on your, your painting there, okay? Let's just say that cloud is that. With the grey, what you're going to do is find, I've got a base there and a base there. On this one I've got a bum and a bum there. So I pretty much find me bum with the grey, and I want to just put it where the bums are, but also I like to finger it out into the cloud, so to speak, like this. This is what's going on in my mind when I'm painting a cloud. Then I might look at it here. I'll add a bit of thick depth there, and the same on that one. So that's how I'm going to add the grey. I'm not just going to go willy-nilly. So I've cleaned that fan brush, and I'm just going to load that up the same way now. So like I showed you here, there's my base. I'm going to find my base and come along. Now look how light I touched that. Very light. Okay, look at the cloud. There's not a heavy cloud, so it doesn't need heavy stuff there. And some of this there. Boom. There's those lines there. Now, like I said, I'm going to finger it up through the cloud just to create that dimension up there. And that's pretty much what I'm going to do. And you want to leave the grey there, but just tidy, sink it into that white cloud. Okay? Smear it. Work it out. And then when you add the yumminess on top of this, it gives it the third dimension. So at the moment, it's a two-dimensional cloud. And I'm simply going to do the same thing on the other cloud there. Nice weather up in there. Onto this part there. And just a little bit scattering in there. That'll do. That will do it. Pull that across. Soften those hard edges down. 
hit the base of this, pull him up into that cloud. And I want to get him over there. So I'm just sitting down the edges of that grey within the cloud. Don't try and be too pedantic about it. It makes its own mind up, as clouds do as they're floating and living and dying within our sky. And now we'll just simply add the yumminess. You can see how I fingered that grey up, how it's worked. You don't go all over the whole footprint. So we've got this white now, just sort of over the grey here and there. Work out where the greys are. Get a bit of a bright edge if you need it. This one here. And this is what I call the yumminess. I call it the yumminess because everyone knows what yumminess is. It's just something that makes it look more yummy and better. Okay, there we go. Before I put this on and after it's been put on, how it's made the clouds look. So you can go to the video just before I added this yumminess. Pause it and take a screenshot and then go back to once the yumminess has been blended in. And you'll get an idea how the yumminess works in the cloud. It gives it that third dimension. Now, don't destroy all the yumminess. See, that I want that white, vibrant bit still poking in that grey there. You're just sort of killing the edges. That's why you need to practice. And you can just see how those acrylic clouds look like they're smooth, they're wet, they're, they're fluffy. They've moved like an oil artist can get. And that's how I've used the retarder in this part of the painting. And I've also used it holding my other paints at bay ready to be used later on. This here, what I did the clouds with, there's no retarder in it. But if I feel, oh my goodness, I think I might use that later on. Watch this. I've got my retarder. Just, there's a couple of drops there. I think that's enough. Grab any little brush. I'm just going to grab this one. And then mix all that up. Now you can mix two piles up like this, just little ones like this, one with and one without retarder. And see how I've spread this out? Do the same on your other pile. And watch just how fast the other one will dry up on you. Just before I finish, I'll just quickly whack in the high cirrus cloud. If you're doing a bigger painting and you feel you have this gap, cirrus cloud is just soft bits like this. Like that, that's all it is. And then you need to blend them down so there's no edge. Make sure you do this while your, your sky is still wet as well. Follow your flow how you want. Watch how cirrus clouds look. And I call these gap fillers because they fill in your gap and give your sky a bit more realism. And you can see now, that's quite a busy sky for a small footprint of a painting, but I'm showing you in this example what you can do and how the retarder is going to work for you. I just need a coffee refill. My coffee's run out, so I've got a teapot here, but I fill it up with coffee and the sugar's already stirred into it. Milk, one fat milk. I've got to watch the cholesterol. <laughs> and I've got my little napkin there, so when I finish giving it a stir, I can put it upside down. And when I pick it up again, it doesn't have a dried puddle of coffee or tea in it. There's my coffee. Don't neglect your coffee. Okay, now I've finished my sky. That can be dried. The good thing about acrylics, you can have a hair dryer. I've got this on hot, and I've, I put it on full speed, and I dry it. And then this trigger here, that just, do that one there. As I'm drying it, I can push that, and it'll turn the air into cold air. So I'm, I've got it with the hot air, and every now and then I'll push that trigger to cool it down because you can make it quite warm and hot, so I like to cool it down as well. Now, back to using retarder. The best primaries you can have is French ultramarine, yellow ochre, and your magenta there. I want to just get in a dark purpley colour so as we can just map in our tree and whatnot. So I've got the French and the magenta, and I'm just going to mix that up. And I can put a little bit of this retarder into that. So if I need to come back to it, it's going to be wet. It's not going to skin up and dry on me, okay? I'm using a glass palette here, and it's simply painted white, or you can paint it grey on the underside so you can see what colours you actually got on top of it. I got this idea many, many years ago from the late Wilson Bickford. I used to watch him on YouTube in my early days, but 
he was an oil artist and I wanted to paint in acrylic so I, I had to adapt. Now here we go, so I'm going to put a little bit more of the tartar in that. That's me chalk, let's say, something I can draw on the canvas with because I want to get my tree mapped in. Now if you know what tree you're going to do, that's fine. So here's our horizon line here and the grass is going to come kind of here. We've got a bit of a hill. I'm leaving. See the how the, the clouds white and it's grey. I'm making sure I'm leaving some of that there. If I went too high up, I could lose that distance. And now me tree, I want to have over here. So pretty much, I'm just going for the thickness of my tree, which is about there. Uh, where are we? So we'll put a bit of a maybe a trunk there. You know, you can do this with pencil. I'm just using this paint here because this is going to act as the darker vibe. This is a big, fat, I don't know if it's called an oak tree or a, one of those. I've seen a picture like this. Now they have big, big, fluffy, brilliant trees. And I like the leaf, the, the way the leaves are all over it as well. So we'll pretty much get this up there. It's a double trunk sort of thing. Now, where are we? So it's going to pretty much come about this high on the painting. Okay, I want to come maybe around here. And I want to leave some there. So keep it in perspective with your trunk though. And it's going to come right down. And then pretty much flatten out. Because whoever been around this tree, they've, um, they've, they've done some gardening and looking after it and the tree's going to pretty much come out here now I'm not going to do a lot I want to break it up like a tree would be broken up and this can sort of hover over there and come well, you can probably come down a bit but come back up there and there'll be windows within this tree like something there windows is like seeing through it when you can see right through it it just makes everything look more realistic so I want something to see through right there this is real easy to do once you know how to do it. And we're just pretty much making holes in our trees here. Okay, I've wet my filbert brush and I'm going to load it up with this paint here. This is just going to create the darkness of our tree. Now it's going to be green and a bit of burnt, dead timber leaf colour. But you need this darks down so those lighter colours will show. Now this tutorial is quite a few tutorials within one. You've just seen how to use Ricarda, how to do skies, how to apply that to a canvas. Now with this, I've loaded my filbert brush up and it's quite hard and I want to start creating the tops of my foliage. And where those windows are, I want to keep them open. Try and look at pictures of trees and feel and see how they react, how they're laying with each other in the foliage and everything. And this darkness is going to just make up for all the greens and yellows and dead greens to shine through your tree. I want the, the trunk in the middle to sort of be opened. So I'll bring some, allowing it to be open. It's always got to come across. This is just still blocking in the tree. Very simple but effective. And when you know how to do it like this, you'll think, wow, that tree was so easy to do. It took a bit longer than I thought, but it was worth it because it looks more realistic and it's full of bullshit. I'll just block in the, the ground as well because we need the depth on the ground as well for our grass colour so I'll just simplicate that down there. I'm just going to do the top half for now because I'll do the bottom where it hits the water later. Okay I've dried it um, I'll get the bottom done as well just of this land so that land sort of you can see how dark it is now I'm just going to come down around the this will start marrying into the water you can see now I could 
stamp this back on, it's going to be dark. Now I've dried the tree, I've had a look, looking at the tree, work out where you might want more darks within this. Because you really need them darks in there to complement the lights once you get the lights in there. And I'm just kind of, for some of this does look a bit weak, but making sure I'm not blobbing it. Now what I'd like to do is paint the water in. I'm going to pick up the craft paint again. It's got some retarder in it, big deal. I don't need it in there, but it doesn't matter if it's in there. Because this is going to help the colour you put for the water glide across your canvas. If you just put it on the raw canvas, I find it gets a bit chalky and dry. So we just need to get this up to there like that. Block it in and then we'll get our sky colours in there. Now dry, make sure that's dry. I'm just going to get this. What I'll do is I'll just go straight across there like so. Because I'll fix the bottom of that up later. I want the watercolour. I don't want to have trouble painting around stuff. So the watercolour. So we've got our sky colours here. This one and this one. Now what's the time? Real time is 3 minutes past 1. So it was quarter past 12 or something. So it's been over 45 minutes. That this paint is still wet. Look at that. It hasn't skinned up. Now this is that polluted part of the sky. So this is just to about there. I don't want a big blob on my brush. So I'll start from about here. Now see that white that I put on the canvas? It's going to help this glide. That's a bit red. So I've got to go greyer. Okay, that's better. So we've just got that there. I'm massaging it in, rubbing it in. Pick up the cerulean blue, see how wet this is? That's stayed wet. Okay, my camera wasn't on when I painted the blue onto the canvas, but I've just painted it on there. Uh, my camera was on when I thought it was off, and it was off when I thought it was on. So hence, you didn't see the blue go on. But there we go, we've got it on there anyway. So I've got some white. And I'll just replicate the clouds into the water there. Bits of it here. There, I'll put a gap. And we've got this one here. So all I'm doing is about there, blobbing it around there. Come past where the tree will be. Pick up some more, maybe this one over here somewhere. Okay, and little bits of remnants of, that's it. I'm going to just grab my put it on a brush and just simply water fire them. Now I've dried the water. I'm just going to pick up that purple block and in color again, and I want to get this back to where I want it over there and just block it in. simply the water's dry we simply want to replicate the tree so we're going to come from about there you get a gap there you need that distinct gap to make it look real and get that a bit lower there we go and now I want to create this in the water so to do that I just simply want to grab I'm going to come along here to that bit and start pulling it down, but making it distorted and making it open and hairy like it is up the top there. We need this to come out about there. I'll get the edges of it done first. Now what I'm going to do is just come upside down just so as I can get these bits a little bit more vibrant. Now reflections are distorted so they don't have to be exactly mirrored, like the blurs can be more blurred like this. See that's coming blurred right up there a bit more. So grabbing a flat brush and I want to scallop this landmass 
into the water. But I don't want any blobs on the end of these lines. See, like I've got there. I want these nice and sharp. This is still underpainting, believe it or not. Just to be distinctive. And now the shadow of the tree in the water is kind of, it has its, its movement on the water within the reflection. This is all gonna be sunken back with color. Now I've grabbed the sky colour and you need to bring some of the sky colour just back into this stuff here like where our openings are coming from the water. And just Real fine up here it's got to be because it's further away. Okay, let's grab our yellow oxide, yellow ochre, bit of water with that. And I'm going to make me greens. Now this one is going to be without retard. I'm just getting water in it just to get it because that's quite a thick body, that one. And I've got some French ultramarine. Now this is going to make my dead green color. Okay. So I'm mixing this up with that yellow light, cat light. Now over here, I'm gonna mix up me green for the tree. So I've got the, get you out of there. Cadmium yellow light and the French ultramarine. And get our green going. Now that's a bit too yellow, so I'm gonna get a bit of water with that. Get more blue into that. So this is more blue green instead of yellow green. There we go, look at that. The more blue you add or the less blue, the different value you get of that green. I'm getting the paint mixed first, then I will add my retarder to the pile. So, so I'm going to grab some retarder, put over there, mix that whole, see that whole footprint, get it all in there, because otherwise if you don't get that bit, it'll skin up. There's our base green, just from our primary colours there. Now I do want a bit of a darker colour, so what I'm going to do is just scratch some of that outside paint, bring it over here. Don't need too much. And I'll grab some of the French again and just start getting a darker green here. Now I've got some burn umber here and I've put a bit of black with it so it's not quite black and it's not quite burnt umber. Put a little bit of water on my script liner just so as I can trace in the tree trunk overall here. So I'm gonna just get him in where I want it. And this needs to go in first, just so as all the um, foliage can sink it back. Now, if you find you're getting potholes and you can see the canvas teat through your brush strokes of this, just add some more, a little bit of dip it in water and wiggle it through so it'll make the paint a little bit more inky. And these branches, I just want to come up through the tree there periodically, just like so. Here's the main trunk here, we'll get this scratched up. Get, them, get the edges of those trunks and branches, these main thick ones, get them sharp so they don't look weak. I'm just finding bits where I can put bits of trunk, bits of branches like that. I'm kind of coming down to there, do that. I might fork something out there and come up there, take advantage of that sky window over here, just like that. 
and you're just taking advantage of those open spots where you'll see the trunk just like that now with the bottom half in the reflection I just want to like find me lines here and just kind of go like that leaving my where I bought the blue water in I want to leave them there still but just do this like that take your time and I don't know like see I'm adding the reflection as I go but we're controlling how this reflection is going to look just in the way of the water the, in the lines of the water the swell the wind hitting the water from left and right okay I've just finished putting the dark branches crisscrossed them everywhere but we've got the main structure there now I wanted to do the color of the foliage and it's pretty much going to go from the dark to the lights so with these greens that I mix there's my dark medium and the light that's the dead color so I want to this has had the retarder in it remember I mix it put the retarder in all these they're still wet and I want to start stamping this on just working out where I want my dark foliage to be so I'm going to take advantage of this here dribbling over the past the purple into the sky there there's a nice dark bits there it's just out here and once you've finished your tree if you feel there's not enough darks here and there you simply add them back the top's going to be pretty much hidden with light colors pull it down but don't take away too much of what's there coming across here a bit there I'm just putting it on and pulling it down that'll do we've got enough of that color there I just need to come across in the middle a bit and get rid of that weird look now I've dried that cleaned my filbert brush and I'm grabbing some of this mid-tone value that I mixed earlier and we want to start getting this just on the top of that green that we put there now those branches that I put there I'm also using these brush strokes to sink them back and make them look a little bit more natural as well now I dry every layer like when I've done the green I dry it when I'm putting this on I'm going to dry it before I add the next color and that bit of purple you see here and there that's just shadow within the tree itself we want to get bits of this vibe within our reflections this color this value i'm just putting it on i'm pulling it down putting it over that purple as well added more dark because I felt there wasn't enough dark now I'm putting this mid tone green back over where I just added the dark and I want to kind of grab this that's kind of looking better come across those trunks again leaving the dark down the bottom there there we go now we'll add the dead wood color in there which makes it look alive now everything's had a dry I want to get this dead leaf color very thin very thin not blotchy and blobby and you want this just to radiate and filter through here and there and this creates the actual realism within your tree foliage sometimes we can forget to add this in you find the brush that's going to work for you severe sun which kills the finer twigs and leaves radiate it down don't keep it all at the same thickness I'm just crossing some of those branches crossing over 
so it doesn't look too one-dimensional. This is like the clouds, you had the yumminess. This stuff here I feel in foliage just adds that sense of realism. You could probably add a little bit of white to some of that. I'm just going to do it down here off camera. And um, the very, let's say here, let's see if it's going to work or not. This bit here, I can see very lightly touching that bit there. Just adding this into there where I feel we need it. Just a little bit here and there. Now what I want to do is just quickly put in the grass on the ground there. I'm grabbing the mid value green and I just want to get the top of it stamped on there. I'm just using this for a bit of turning around. Now I want to I'm making it solid but just with the brush strokes. I'm not trying to get any kind of you know I can even do that if I wanted to. I'm not trying to get any certain grass shape yet. Now I'll grab the bottom of my brush upside down and I want to kind of filter this into the water there as well. So I'll show you, I'm going to use this filbert brush to get it on where I want it everywhere. And then that flat brush that I used for those lines and start going over those purple lines with this green pushing it in and under the water there. Once we put the watercolour over it, it's going to sit it down. Now dry it. Give it a dry. Everything gets dry. That's a good thing about acrylics. Now I just want to get our shadow on this side of the tree there. Using the dark green that we had here, even if you don't have those colours, just use a forest green. I want to pretty much come from about half of the tree there and start stamping it on. In a roundabout way, like that. Where are we? Where we get the right paint? And it's going to simply, this will be sunken back with lighter paint. Come about here somewhere. And where else? And just probably taper out here a little bit. Very, where we at? That'll do. I might have a little scratchy of dark there, maybe. Maybe a little scratchy of dark there. Flutter in here, not too much. I'm picking up some of that burn umber and black that I had mixed, just so as I can, right there. Now Filter down a little bit, come up the trunk a bit. Now with this mid-tone yellow that we had, I'm grabbing some more yellow, cadmium yellow light, and I want to get that to the highlighted grass colour there. So we want our grass now to kind of Sit in front of that shadow periodically, backwards and forwards from it. Look at this. I dried it. Did I say I dried it? I dried it. I can only just pull it off here. I don't want it having uniform, patterny looking lines there. How's that looking for colour? That's fine. <laughs> and 
that green that we fur this green here is acting as depth for this color here and then we'll add the obviously the dead color as well grabbing the dead wood color look at that batard it's kept it wet I've added a little bit of white just to make it more opaque and we want to scuffle in some of this stuff now this is the main vibe that's a dead weedy looking grass we'll sink in that shadow back Just grabbing a little bit more white just to make a bit more of it more highlighted just so as I can get bits hitting with light here and there I'm just grabbing the highlighted green the mid-tone green where I added more yellow to and I'm just kind of um, getting those vibes and reflections here and there, just sort of going left and right, getting some of this into the water there. So this is where you need your brush now. You want it nice and chisel, and we're going to start from the water, come from the water. And just start making the ends of this reflection nice and refined they're going to come pretty much all the way across at this bit being broken up like that in this grassy bit where it's meeting the water Come out into the water a bit if you have to, like that. I just practice doing these thin, I call them scallops. See, if it's just a reflection scallop and not the water, you can see how it just looks a bit wrong. Something was missing. And the bit that was missing is these water scallops. These are the real finer ones. I'm just sign this and I want to thank everyone who supports my channel, Patreons and YouTube members. You're much appreciated. I love your support and I encourage other people to do the same and keep me going here. Don't forget Steve's footprint. Right, let's take the tape off and see how this looks, eh? we've got a kind of a realistic reflection sky and a tree with its colors showing you how I use the Vitata 
in these acrylic paints and to get what we're getting. And I know you can do it. Well, that was exciting. I really enjoyed that. Got a lot of things across to you and hopefully you like what I'm doing. If you do, tell your friends. But if you don't like what I'm doing, you tell everybody. Also, check out this other video of mine. Goodbye, good luck, and good on you.